Hey scholars, I'm Brandon Bailey, and I'm your tutor for today. Today we're going to go over a general client-server architecture with the context of a web browser and a web server. And um, let's get into it. So this right here, right, we have a general <coughs> layout of like your typical home, for how your house looks. Got your laptop, you got your cell phone, and you got your tablet, and you got your Internet of Things refrigerator there. I don't know if you have that or not. But, um, you know, and then we have a wireless router in our house as well. So if you look at all these different machines, this is also a machine right here. And it has an IP address as well. So, put six, 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 six. So here we go, right? The IP address is 1.1.1.1 for this laptop, 2.2.2.2 for the phone, and you guessed the threes for the uh, the computerized refrigerator. And then we have IP address of 4.4.4.4 for our wireless router. And 6.6.6.6 for our GitHub uh, server on the World Wide Web. Now, every, now this is because every machine that is associated on the internet and uses TCP IP protocol to you know connect to other machines has to have an IP address. IP address is like your cell phone number. Uh, it's hard to remember people's cell phone numbers. That's why we save a contact of uh, a name and a cell phone number. It's kind of a similar concept here. Um, your IP address is your cell phone number, and a domain name is uh, that association that's easy to remember uh, that gets resolved to those numbers that represent the IP address and where that um, data or that server is located on the World Wide Web. <clears throat> so we're going to focus on uh, laptops. And uh, we're going to discuss how this laptop, this laptop makes a request to github.com and retrieves the uh, index.html file from the root directory in the resources folder. So um, we're going to go ahead and assume some things here. We're going to assume that once we hit the cache, our local cache, you usually have two caches in your machine, one on your web browser and one on your machine itself. Um, you're, you're going to check the local machine for your web browser. Let's say we got a hit which means we're going to have to check in more other places. Normally we have to do check the internet service provider and go through the whole dance. If you want to learn more about how that gets resolved from a host name, and we don't have it saved in the cache, we have a video of that on um, our Tutor D Scholars channel, and you can check that out and learn more about it. So we got that hit, and we know <coughs> that github.com is equal github.com is equal to an IP address that equals 6.6.6.6. And, um, yeah, so I missed my five somewhere. I don't hear any fives here. But anyway, um, I don't know how I can't count. <coughs> so, regardless, we're going to go to github.com. We have uh, the entry saved in our cache that is on the web browser. And so now we just know exactly where it's located on the web. So now we can make that get request it's through our wireless router. Our wireless router will make that request on our behalf. And it's going to have this host, this uh, IP address associated to this request. So now we're making a, a request. It's actually a get request. We're using the get verb to get a resource from um, the server. We're getting the root directory of the server, so we're going to request the index that HTML file. That's how it usually works. You always get the index.html file for any request. That's a default file the server automatically looks for, unless it's configured to look for something else and serve some other form, some other file. Um, it's naturally going to look for index.html file always and forever. But uh, we found the file. We're going to send them that file in a response to the request. And in that response, we're going to say, uh, give it a 200 status with a, a code of OK. Now, uh, that's a little uh, status code for HTTP stuff. It's a little bit beyond this stuff, but you'll see that. If you ever look at the network tab, you'll see all this happening. Once that indexation of file gets, um, gets um, you know, retrieved by your web browser, your web browser starts to build it. And uh, you see that spinner on your computer and your tab as it's building the website. And you see the website slowly be painted onto your screen. Uh, that's the render engine working. What it's doing is going and reading through the um, head 
tags within your document, your index.html document, retrieving other files like images or cascading style sheets or additional JavaScript files or some other libraries in the CDN, uh, Content Delivery Network. And um, it will slowly build and recursively build the web page as it is rendered and painted onto your screen. Um, <clears throat> that's it in a nutshell. I didn't finish this request because you get a response back to each one. And, uh, and yeah, that's it, you know? So again, if you have a, a laptop or any other web, um, client, a web enabled client and it has an IP address associated with it, your cell phone number, but it also has a MAC address, that's your social security number, and um, that's how you're able to keep track of those different connections and relationships. Um, once you make a request from your local machine, uh, it's going to go through your wireless router, and then your wireless router is going to be the representation of this IP address to make the request to the, the, the server on the internet. You get a response, you're going to start building the web page, and you're going to uh, request additional um, resources, and um, that's kind of it. There's another video we have up, up, uh, up on our website as well, talking about like the DNS system and how DNS works as a service on the internet. So we didn't have this like up front this hit. Uh, we already have that information saved in our local cache. Then it would have took about a, you know a minute or so to actually get the data. But if you try to make a request again right afterwards, it's going to be like less than 200 milliseconds, and that's because um, you know it already has the cache um, updated with the value of where it's at, and um, it's easily able to get to that, that server and retrieve the data. Um, and like a lightning fast. So, you know, that's about it for this quick tip on how the internet works. I hope you take something from this and um, I'll see you guys on Saturday. All right.